Governor Dennis Dugard stated in his inaugural address on January 8, uh, 2011, that even with all the problems that we as a state and a nation were facing, that he was very optimistic about South Dakota's future. He was optimistic because we always overcome our challenges by embracing our values as South Dakotans, the values of self-reliance, of frugality, of hard work, and perseverance. This grandson of a Danish immigrant, Dennis Dugard, learned that these values were so important from his amazing parents. And he lives these values on a day-to-day -day basis as an inspiration to us all. Dennis works tirely, tirelessly, day and night, persevering to make life better for all of us. I should know he beats me to the Capitol every day. <laughs> Governor Dugard and Linda are impactful servant leaders who these past three plus years have personified a passion to take care of South Dakotans, especially those of us in need. From those assailed by nature's wrath of floods, fires, blizzards, and to the infants and children that need loving foster care. Now with prophetic vision, the governor ended his inaugural address by extolling that he indeed said by embracing the values that our brightest days are ahead of us. And boy, you were right. But if I could be so bold, our brightest days are still ahead of us, only with him leading us. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a true privilege and honor to introduce our current governor for now and the next term, Dennis Dugard. Today, I'm officially announcing my candidacy for a second term as governor of South Dakota. Uh, I want to begin, though, by saying thank you. I want to say thank you to all of you for coming this morning, and not just for what you're doing today. But thank you for all you've done for me over these past several years. I would not have won four years ago, and I wouldn't be in a position to run again today if not for people like you and thousands of people like you. You've signed petitions and walked in parades. You've put up signs, made phone calls. You've written checks and volunteered your time. And for that, I'm grateful. You know, I need to wear suits more often than I like these days, but underneath these suits, I'm still just a farm kid from South, uh, from Del Rapids, and uh, every day I still think how amazing it is that I've been given this honor, and I thank you for this privilege. Thank you so much. You all know Linda, our oldest daughter, Laura, and her daughter, Stella, and Laura's husband, Jay, is right behind her, our middle daughter, Sarah, and her husband, Tony, and Sarah and Tony have a little boy, Henry, who's at daycare today, and Sarah is also expecting in August, so we'll have three grandkids in a bit, and our youngest son, uh, Chris, and his wife, Emily, is at work, but we're very proud of our family. And of course, uh, over here, Matt's family, Karen, and their son, Colin, who is in med school at USD. We're very proud of, of them, too. Of course, you've all been great supporters, but my number one supporter is right here, Linda. Isn't she a great first lady? <laughs> Linda, 
Linda has worked tirelessly as First Lady. I know she was a little bit nervous when we were first elected. Gosh, what does a First Lady do? What, do, what is one supposed to do? You're supposed to have initiatives. What, what can I do? Well, she sees things with both hands. She chaired a task force on infant mortality and has distributed hundreds of safe cribs to new moms. She's uh, traveled to over 200 grade schools to encourage young children to read and to continue reading, even competing with video games and other uh, competition for their time. Uh, she's invited South Dakotans to become foster parents. And after speaking to group after group after group, the number of people expressing interest in exploring what it takes to become licensed as a foster parent has doubled. So Linda has made an impact. And of course, she's hosted literally thousands of people at your governor's mansion in Pierre. You've been great supporters, but I'll tell you what, it's all I can do to keep up with her. Isn't she great? <laughs> There's one more person I want to single out for thanks, and that's Matt. Matt's been a great lieutenant governor, a great running mate for me. When I first selected a running mate four years ago, I used the criteria that I thought you would want to be used. Who would be best to be in place if something would happen to me? And Matt Michaels was a clear choice then, and he still is. Whether it's building levees on the Missouri River, as he did in the Dakota Dunes area, uh, when that un... un uh, parallel flood on the Missouri River occurred, or whether it's building our state's bond rating, we've got our bond rating up to double A plus, and we're going to get to triple A before we're done, or it's building our new state veterans home, and seizing the bull by the horns when the bids come in too high, and going back to the drawing board, and getting the project back under budget, Matt Michaels knows how to get things done, and I'm proud to announce today that Matt will be joining me again as running mate. You know, it's hard to believe that it's been four years, or actually more than four years, since I traveled this state to first announce my candidacy for governor. And a lot has happened over the past four years, and it hasn't always been easy. When we first took office, South Dakota faced a structural deficit of $127 million, meaning the dollars that were coming in every year, not just on a one-time basis, that we expected every year were... Uh, <laughs> the dollars that were coming in every year uh, were $127 million fewer than the dollars we were spending. And it wasn't anyone's fault. It had to do with the recession. Every state was experiencing uh, dramatic declines in their revenue because of the recession. But the fact is, we had to do something about it because you can't spend money you don't have. In my first budget, I did what any family or business would do. I cut expenses. With the courageous legislature, we cut state spending by 10%. I cut my own salary by 15%. I cut the cabinet and cut the staff and every agency of state government. Now, just three years later, South Dakota has enjoyed budget surpluses. Uh, we passed a constitutional amendment requiring a balanced budget. And this year, even though our state debt load already was low, we cut our debt by 20% using one-time uh, money that had come in unexpectedly. At the same time, we were able to freeze the tuition at our university system, significantly increase spending to our technical schools, and increase funding through K-12 education and our Medicaid providers by more than double the inflationary requirement. I'm very proud of what we accomplished in the budget. Many states wish they were in the position in which South Dakota finds itself. And we've experienced success on other fronts as well. We proposed and passed a criminal justice reform, a comprehensive, bipartisan package of reform. Now, it's been less than a year since taking effect, but we're already starting to see dividends. 
We are making the public more safe. We are okay. <laughs> 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 I just want to straighten my tie. <laughs> We're making the public safer, we're holding offenders accountable, still, and we're saving money. And we're still, we've still got things to do in this area. We're still rolling out that reform because it's, it's not something that's once and done, it's something that's going to take a while to uh, execute and to see the impact, but we're already starting to see some of that impact. We also initiated a multi-year focus on workforce development. I'll be back in Sioux Falls. And I'll be in Aberdeen and Rapid City and other cities in this state to talk with local business people, human resource officers, education leaders, to see what we can do to improve our workforce in South Dakota. We've invested in new dual credit opportunities in our high schools and new programs at the technical institutes. We've expanded the medical, the medical school and the physician's assistant program. We've taken aggressive action to bring more health care providers to rural areas, too. And we've continued the successful Dakota Roots program <laughs> to bring South Dakota natives back home to work here with us. I'm also proud of the steps we've taken to preserve and enhance South Dakota's outdoor heritage. In 2011, I launched the Black Hills Forest Initiative to combat the mountain pine beetle. The legislature has invested more than $8 million in this fight, and we are making a difference. In the East, we created Good Earth State Park, our first new state park <coughs> in four years. And last fall, we hosted the Pheasant Summit to confront the recent decline in pheasant numbers and protect this important part of our state heritage. And we created thousands of jobs, only 15 states, in the United States, only 15 states have recovered all the jobs they lost when the recession came along. South Dakota is one of those states. In fact, today South Dakota has 10,000 more jobs than the peak level from which we fell when the recession came <coughs> along. We're more than Dakota is more than 2% above our pre-recession peak, while our nation remains about 1% below the peak from which we fell as a nation. Now, as governor, I work hard to promote South Dakota to businesses, to our own businesses here. Expand here, not in other locations, in other states where you have opportunities. Or come here if you're not from South Dakota. Locate your business here. And I do hard, I work hard to sell it. But the mo most important economic development work our state government can do is to remain business friendly, a low tax environment with reasonable regulation, because business will go if the environment is right. And our South Dakota way is working. And last summer, CNBC named South Dakota America's top state for business because of those things I mentioned. Another way that we make South Dakota a good place for investment is to maintain stability <coughs> and fiscal responsibility in our state government. And I'm very proud of the steps we've taken to strengthen our pension plan. I'm sure we all read the horror stories from other parts of the country where pension funds are underfunded by billions of dollars. Warren Buffett, in his annual letter to Berkshire Hathaway shareholders just this year, <coughs> called pension funds the tapeworm that is in the digestive system of most states and that is going to eat them alive. Warren Buffett knows that it's easy for governments to skip the payment into the pension plan or underfund the payment in the pension plan because there's no immediate consequences of that. The consequences come many years later. Well, that's not something we need to worry about in South Dakota. For decades, governors and legislators have emphasized stability and sound, and sound management. Last year, we achieved a funding level of more than 100% for the South Dakota retirement system. In this day and age, that's a major milestone, and that's one reason why barons 
the Dow Jones Magazine, News Financial Magazine, named South Dakota in 2012 the best run state in America. <laughs> yes, we have a lot of things about which we can be proud in South Dakota, but we should never take it for granted. As I said in my inaugural address, it is not preordained that South Dakota will always be strong or prosperous or free. It is the obligation of every generation to secure the blessings for the generation to come. If we ever fail, if we ever allow our government to become ensnared in a pattern of entitlement or death, it will be because we forgot the core values that have served us for so long. It's too easy to allow the expediencies of the present to distract us from the values that will carry us in the future. It is too easy to make an exception just this once rather than face the tough choices. Over the past four years, we have made those tough choices and stayed true to our values, South Dakota values. Our South Dakota way is working. It's working. That's why I'm asking you today to give me the opportunity to continue to serve as your governor. Together, we will continue to make the tough choices, the right choices, to put our state on a strong foundation for the future. As Matt said, I know our brightest days are yet to come. Thank you. Now you can go back to work. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank